You ever notice when you buy a canvas and start painting on it, you may come across some dents or dings or defects in it. And you know what? We've all been there. I'm gonna share with you how I inspect all of my canvases before I even purchase them. Not only is this gonna save you money, it's gonna save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Here we go. Now, real quick, every canvas you purchase will have some minor defects in it. This video is all to show you the major ones to look out for so that way you don't waste your money or waste your effort while painting on a canvas. And the very first thing you wanna look at is when you hold it in your hands, I want you to actually inspect it with your hands. Rotate the canvas on its axis and actually feel the edges. See if there's any bumps or dings or defects that stand out to you. If there are any, that can lead to weak canvas upholding or archival quality, whatever you wanna go with in the long run. Also, run your fingers across the top of the canvas. This will indicate if you feel any punctures or indentations. I also really recommend hold the canvas up to eye level and rotate the canvas. If you can, try to get a little reflect of the light in the store so you can see if there's been any indentations. What happens a lot of times is a corner of another canvas will be laying on the front of this canvas for days, weeks, or months, leading to a strong indentation, which can lead to a non taut canvas. No joke, get up all in this canvas, give it a good feel and rub down, whisper sweet nothings to it, and uh, maybe give it a good make out session. Turn uh, off the lights. Don't judge me, I'm single. I haven't had action in months. Now we wanna look at the front of the canvas and the rails that you can paint on and look if there's any discoloration. Discoloration can mean a few different things. First, it means that cheap or crappy primer or gesso was used. It could also mean that it was shipped or stored improperly. And more importantly, it could mean that it was possibly exposed to extreme heat fluctuations or moisture. If you see any discoloration on your canvas, put it back and grab a different one right away. Now let's talk about the back of the canvas. I want you to take your canvas and look at it from the back and hold it up to the light where the light can shine through the canvas and you can see some things that are gonna be extremely important. Now, if your store doesn't have good lighting or a strong light in it, you know what you can do? Is actually just take your cell phone, turn on the light here, hold it behind it, and you can go back and forth across it to inspect what we're gonna do here. But most likely, there's good enough light in your store. Hold the canvas up and it should have an even casting or an even distribution of gesso across it. Basically, it should be the same color all the way through. As you look up, down, don't forget to rotate it because some of the rails might be blocking the shading or casting a shadow on top of it. If you notice anything that goes from light to dark in any spots, that's an indicator that there's sparse gesso on this canvas, or at least in that area. And while that's not a deal breaker, it's just as easy to put this canvas back and pick up one that has an even coating across it. While we're looking at the back of the canvas and holding it up to our light, let's bring it a little bit closer to us and really inspect the weave that's on the back of the canvas. Now, you want that to be extremely tight. When it's tight, it represents the fact that the canvas is very taut. You want it to be tight. You don't want a saggy canvas. In fact, you don't want saggy most things in life. Trust me. You want it to be very taut, which is gonna be good for your painting as you go forward and creating your masterpiece. Also, when you're looking at the back, it's gonna give you the ability to see if any light is poking through. Now that can mean a couple of things. You maybe have some pinholes, loose weave, or even some cuts from when the manufacturing process was made of a particular canvas. And if there's something that's not gonna work for you, I recommend putting the canvas back and getting a new one and start inspecting that new one. Now, most pinhole leaks and light cuts can be easily fixed with more applications of gesso or more paint. But if you think it's gonna affect your final masterpiece, like I said, just grab a new canvas and forget about this one. All right, a very, very big one. Any canvas that you pick up, I want you to make sure you do this last tip. This is probably one of the most important ones and you're never gonna notice it until after you finish your masterpiece. So I'm doing you a big service here. I want you to take any canvas you're gonna buy and lay it flat on a table or floor if you're in the store. And I want you to push down on all corners there. 
If the canvas is wobbling when you're pushing on it, that means that this canvas frame is warped. And it could have been warped many different ways from all the ways we inspected here. Could have gone through heat fluctuations, could have been stored improperly, or you know what? It could have just been sitting in the store so long that it was leaning over and just gravity did its work on it. We don't want a warped canvas. Warped canvases are fixable, but it takes a lot of work with rebalancing out, restretching it in certain ways, putting weights on it in certain spots, or adding like keys on the back of the frame. That's a lot of work. You know what's a lot easier? Take this canvas and just throw it off to the side and just grab a new one and start inspecting from there. This is super important and here's why. Let's just say you created a beautiful masterpiece and you go to hang it on your wall. The last thing you want is it not sitting flush with that wall and it just kind of moves around and has an uncentered balance to it. Or worse, when you open up windows or doors in your house and there's a displacement of air, the last thing you want is your painting rattling, going uh, uh, because it's not centered and balanced and it's not just flush with the wall. It seems like a minor thing, but trust me, it's gonna drive you really, really crazy, especially if you're gonna try to sell a final artwork. Never be afraid, and I do this every single time when I buy a canvas. I look for a table, sometimes you can find it at the custom framing table, lay it down and or put it on the floor, inspect it, make sure it's flush, make sure it's not work. It's one of the biggest things you can look out for when you're buying a brand new canvas. Now you're probably wondering, wow, I buy my canvases online, maybe through your links, which I appreciate by the way. You can do this with the canvases that you purchase. Go through them, inspect them. If there are any that are damaged, you can contact the seller and they'll most likely give you a discount on your purchase. It's extremely common. I do it all the time because you know what? Things get damaged in shipping or you don't know. When you buy a stack of paintings that come all saran wrapped together, maybe the middle one has a cut in it. Never be afraid to reach out to the seller because it's your money after all. But doing all these different ways to inspect your canvas before you even purchase is gonna save you a ton of money and a lot of heartache. Now, if I miss anyone, hey, you know what? You can give me your best tip in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and become a YouTube channel member. These are some of the best tips you're ever gonna find and I'd love to keep growing my community, trying to get to 20K. And I have a feeling we're gonna get there real quick. I'll see you all later. Take care, because I gotta go uh, make some sweet love to my canvas. So, uh, you come here often?